Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. From proposals to end load shedding, to an update on South Africa's renewables procurement program, it's been another week on the electricity front. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Load shedding continued to dominate headlines this week. Yes, rightfully so. We're still in this very intensive phase of load shedding. We knew ahead of this winter, Eskom warned that there could be 100 days of load shedding but we didn't anticipate this wildcat strike and the disruptions that arose from that. So we started load shedding around the 20th of June and then the strike activity happened around that 24th or so and it really since then we've had intensive sort of stage six, between stage four and stage six. And only now are we starting to see this tapering of uh, load shedding stages towards the weekend and into next week. So we've had this very long and intensive period of load shedding and it's really dominated headlines, it's dominating the national psyche. We know there's a lot of discussion around the July riots of last year and the economic damage that those and the deaths that that caused, but the economic damage that load shedding has caused for over the last 15 years dwarfs that figure. It's, it's, a, you know, it's really debilitating, it stops investment. Without investment you don't have job creation and that's really what we need as South Africa to get ourselves back onto an economic trajectory that is, uh, it gets people employed, that gets people's livelihoods to a point where we don't have these high levels of poverty and hopefully over time having more people employed I mean, you can start making a dent into this extreme inequality that we have in society. So load shedding has to be sorted out as a basic to get this economy moving again. There is also more assertiveness on possible solutions. Yes, you know, we've had uh, everyone from the African National Congress, National Executive Committee to the National Planning Commission and everyone in between coming up with suggested solutions. And, uh, you know, there seems to be a, sort of a consensus around some of the levers that need to be pulled. Eskom needs to get its coal fleet, you know, operating more stably. But there's also an acceptance, I think, growing that it needs both time and space to do that. And the only way it can have time is that it needs to take down some of these units for uh, long-term maintenance. And the only time way it will have space is that there needs to be more electrons in the system. And the only electrons that can come in in the sort of 24-month period would be possibly more diesel, uh, because we've already got that, possibly an emergency power ship, but really uh, fit for the future is uh, you can easily start accelerating solar in particular solar PV both at the, the company level, the household level and at the utility scale level and wind which takes a bit longer and storage but within that 24 months you can add a lot of ele electrons through solar wind and battery storage and possibly on the side but it's not really future fit, it's very expensive, maybe uh, some of these are very short term emergency th uh, things adding some more diesel capacity bringing in some power ships, but we're at that point now, we really have to stop this load shedding and we have to stop it urgently to arrest the economic decline. Finally, there was an update on South Africa's renewables procurement program. Yes, this is also important because, you know, we had a seven year gap uh, in procurement and that's really why we're in the situation. Why Eskom doesn't have time and space to do its proper maintenance and retire its coal fleet, as some would say, with some dignity. So that wouldn't be that it's switching itself off and decommissioning itself uh, as it is at the moment, is because we stopped procurement. Uh, the state capture years at Eskom were very bad from a corruption perspective, but it was also very bad for the electricity supply industry where we had a seven year gap. And then in resuming uh, in 2018 with uh, the first get mopping up the, the bid window four, that took very long. Then we had, it took a very long time to get uh, the integrated resource plan into place and the ministerial determinations that are needed to do procurement and eventually we did, but we haven't got into a rhythm. So the bid window five, 25 projects that we've procured or we've named the pr uh, preferred bidders, we haven't got those to financial close. And there's a number of reasons for that, but basically we need to get those to close. Uh, and then we in really into bid window six and uh, that was really the update that we got this week, you know, how that process is being run, what are the differences between bid window five, there's been some tweaks around the program, the size of the generators are obviously going to be much bigger than was in the past because of the 100 megawatt reform. Under the old uh, days, the, the solar PV plants, the maximum you could do under utility scale was 75, that makes no sense. 
So that's been increased to over two, to 240. And same with wind. So these are much bigger projects. There seems to be appetite. A lot of applications to ESKIM for bid connection um, cost et estimate letters. Now there's always a, uh, a gap there whether all those will be converted into full budget quotes and we know Eskom's grid constraints are a massive problem and we also know that the unit that runs that has been uh, undercapacitated. There's a view now that that has got capacity to give these budget quotes out when the renewables uh, projects want to com commit uh, to building and uh, that we're starting to see hundreds of these coming through the system not only for the utility scale program, but there's a number of applications for cost estimate letters and budget quotes coming as a result of the 100 megawatt reform. So that office is extremely busy, and that's a good sign. But we know the grid constraints are a massive issue, and having to shepherd the, the developers towards areas where they would not really want to be initially, away from the Cape provinces into the inland provinces, where there still is grid capacity. But there's virtue, in, especially in Mpumalanga, where we will see a decline in coal mining over time, uh, not immediately. Uh, it's, there's virtue in using that grid capacity and aligning it to the just energy transition. So this was an important update, and there's a view that we really need to get these projects to close. Uh, there's also uh, an announcement within that from the RPP office that the minister will be adding a ministerial determination to mop up the rest of the renewables as part of uh, the RP 2019. Now we know that's being reviewed, but there's still about 13,000, 14,000 megawatts that can be mopped up, which means that we could possibly have bigger bid windows. Even bid window six could be enlarged, and bid window seven could definitely be enlarged from the, the paltry 1,600 megawatts that we're currently planning to do under bid window seven. We really need to expand that given the, the, the scale of the crisis. And if we have that determination eventually coming through from the minister, that will create the, the framework for a much larger scale procurement. It will be interesting to see whether uh, when the president announces some time, the response, the government's response to load shedding, we've had the ANC response, we've had other responses. Um, but we, when we see that, whether these bid windows might be used as a key lever to expand the amount of procurement, but then the key is to close. We can't have the situation of delays, of months and months of delays, and we need to have a, a program that is fit for purpose. And I think a lot of ours are going to be in the RPP office on the 21st of July to see how they respond to calls for the local content exemptions in the bid window six, because that has been a sticking point, as have been the supply chain disruptions, which have created a whole new cost environment, which uh, put, I think, some of those bid window fire projects underwater, and that's possibly why we're also not seeing them close. But th th we'll have to wait and see, one, the president's response, and whether we can leverage these bid windows more effectively for much bigger scale procurement. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.